E3, the cool kid in the sandbox that has all the new shiny toys except this time he can't wait to share them with you. This year's E3 had the audience crying, laughing and one person even called it breathtaking. But if you missed all the press conferences at ungodly hours in the morning, don't worry, we've got your back. My name is Rage and I'm going to give you the TLDR of E3 2019. Seems like Microsoft absolutely stole the show this year, announcing some long-awaited titles, incredible remakes, and brilliant DLC. It's hard not to let Microsoft dominate the show, but we'll give it a go. To kick it off, we have Fantasy Star Online 2. Previously a Japanese exclusive sequel to the Dreamcast from 2000, PSO2 is now coming to the West after nearly half a decade. Free to play and chock full of missions, events and content, 2020 is the year you can stop using fan translations in Japanese servers and the year you can easily play one of the best MMOs of the last few years. Hot on its heels for anticipation is Cyberpunk 2077 and if you didn't hear, Microsoft didn't hold back on this one. Rocking up onto the stage as if it was his own backyard, the man himself, Keanu Reeves casually convincing the audience that this game is going to be breathtaking. To which someone in the audience replies with, You're breathtaking. Is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> you're breathtaking. If you're not already sold on Cyberpunk 2077, we definitely recommend checking out more info about the game below. Alongside highly anticipated titles, Halo Infinite finally got its announcement trailer, leaving all Halo fans quaking. The Master Chief is back and he is ready to start the next chapter of the legendary franchise, beginning holiday 2020. Oh, easy there, big guy. You're not. Status report. Status report? What? There's something you need to see, Chief. Speaking of Game Pass, Microsoft also announced its new Xbox Game Pass for PC and Ultimate service. Why is this cool? Well, for years the Xbox console has been hogging the benefits of this subscription service, but now the PC version brings its all-you-can-play gaming service model from console to Windows 10, which grants gamers access to over 100 PC games, including some serious AAA titles. And the Ultimate? Well, for an extra $5 a month, you can get yourself this access to both PC and console, as well as getting Xbox Live Gold membership. Bargain. We also need to mention Elder Ring. Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin collaborating with the studio who brought you Dark Souls, Sekiro and Bloodborne sounds like a match made in heaven for sadistics. But Elder Ring looks to be from software's biggest game yet. With a dark, bleak RPG and a complex character and twisted narrative, this is definitely one to keep a watch out for. On the flip side, it's bright, sunny and clear skies in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We also got a look at the refresh of Microsoft's Classic Simulator. This version is rocking in 4K this time and will utilize their Azure Cloud platform and AI to generate realistic weather conditions and landscapes. This is going to be a direct flight to Simulator Paradise. After half a decade, EA create a game worthy of holding the title as a Star Wars game. Kicking off their conference, EA Play showcased 15 minutes of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order gameplay. This combat looked like the best possible combination of Star Wars and Assassin's Creed, except this assassin is a young former Jedi Padawan named Cal Kestis. We see Kestis cut through Storm and Purge Troopers with his lightsaber and pull off supernatural feats with his array of force powers. I also can't cover EA Play without mentioning the underdog BR Apex Legends and how well that game has done in such a short amount of time, nobody can deny it. 
EA Play gave Apex Legends their rightful place amongst the conference and shared with us Watson, the 10th playable character. Respawn says that Watson is a very different character from the rest of the roster in terms of what she's capable of and how she fits into the bigger picture. And they even teased us saying that she will bring some kind of surprise dragon into the mix. Speaking of BR, Bethesda announced that Fallout 76 will be getting a Battle Royale mode. Something rather questionable and I still haven't made my mind up on it whether I love it or not. However, I do love me a BR, so I'm willing to try it. Now, before E3, Bethesda made it excruciatingly clear that Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield would not be making an appearance onto the show. However, that didn't mean that disappointment followed. What did was the announcement of Doom Eternal, the direct sequel to the renowned Doom. They showcased gameplay and revealed the release date, which is November 22nd this year. They also announced Deathloop with a single reveal cinematic and from what I can gather, it seems to be a two player race against the clock game where you must make your way through hordes of enemies whilst also keeping your eye out for the enemy player. We don't know much about this game yet, but it has caught everyone's attentions, and being from the creators of Prey and Dishonored, it's definitely one that has potential. Alright, Governor, what's all this then? Ubisoft kicked off their conference with Watch Dogs Legion, and need I say no more, we have been guessing that the new Watch Dogs will be London based, and following leaks and claims, they are now confirmed to be true. Set in a post-Brexit London, the UK's economy is crumbling, but it moves away from the solo protagonist of earlier games and now allows you to recruit and play almost every single citizen in the city. It's up to us to take our city back. Thing is, we can't do it alone. We need to recruit a resistance. Now, when video games meets the TV industry, it's always a recipe for disaster. However, Ubisoft fancy their chances. They are releasing a movie of The Division and teamed up with Deadpool 2 director David Leitch and Netflix themselves, they reckon that they'll be delivering us a great movie. I can't mention Ubisoft without mentioning Just Dance, and they kicked off their presentation with the same dance display and another lovable character dressed up. However, this time the latest game in the series, Just Dance 2020, is coming to Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Stadia, Google's new online cloud gaming service, and the Wii. Yep, a Wii game in 2019. So dust off that old rectangular device as it's time to get jiggy with your Wii character. We all knew that Final Fantasy VII was getting a remake and Square Enix showcased an exciting gameplay and cinematic trailer alongside a release date, but what we didn't know was that Final Fantasy VIII is finally getting a remaster as well. So Final Fantasy fans were left screaming, yelling and crying during this year's Square Enix conference. But what wasn't as well received, especially in Square Enix's Twitch chat, was the reveal of the brand new Marvel game, The Avengers. That's right, the long-awaited Marvel's Avengers game by Crystal Dynamics was finally revealed with a trailer and a release date to get fans excited. However, during the release trailer, a lot of people were 50-50 on the voice acting, notably comparing Travis Willingham's voice to Chris Hemworth's, but I guess we'll have to wait and see how this one pans out. Let's make this quick. Secure the bridge. Nintendo ended E3 with their Nintendo Direct presentation, and they showed a number of titles, including some surprises we didn't already know about. The biggest of the bunch, undoubtedly, was the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. Although we don't know much about this game, uh, or its release date, or even its context or name, we're sure it's going to be just as breathtaking as its prequel. I may be biased because I love this game, and one of the most anticipated games heading into E3 it was Animal Crossing. They teased us back in Nintendo Direct in September 2019, and since then it's been absolutely quiet. No gameplay footage, no photos, no names, nothing. It seems like Nintendo are pretty good for keeping things under wraps. 
But finally, we've gotten our first look at Animal Crossing New Horizons, the upcoming installation of the Animal Crossing series. Now, it wouldn't be a complete E3 without announcing some new tech. And no, although we're not getting a Nintendo Switch 2.0, Microsoft did announce their new Xbox console, Project Scarlet. The new device is up to four times more powerful, and it will include a fast non-mechanical SSD hard drive and powered by custom inards built with the help of chipmaker AMD. They also announced the new Xbox Elite Controller Series 2 and paired it with its high-tech trailer showcasing the different elements of the controller, including profiling and adjustable tension thumbsticks. Lastly, AMD did something pretty impressive as well. AMD is about to release a wave of third-gen Ryzen desktop CPUs that sound like they might intrude on Intel's territory for the first time in years. The Ryzen 3000 lineup that AMD announced at Computex two weeks ago now has its data shared online, and it is absolutely shattering for the market. It suggests that its new 7 nanometer processors are not only cheaper and more power efficient, and not only faster at creator tasks because of the additional cores, but neck and neck with Intel's very best in gaming performance as well. Assuming all these claims stack up, I am eagerly waiting to see what reviewers discover in July. So there we have it, a TLDR of E3 2019. We hope you enjoyed it. Did I miss some? Let me know in the comments box below. In the description, you'll find links to all of the games I mentioned so you can find out more info. But now that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to like this video and subscribe for more gaming content.